Uh, we're now going to talk about something a bit different, storytelling, and how transmedia, the transcendence of content through different channels is now becoming a powerful tool for advertisers and uh, brand storytelling. Uh, so please help me welcome my friend and the CEO of Starlight Runner Entertainment, Mr. Jeff Gomez. so good to be here in Singapore. I've traveled many thousands of miles. I'm from New York City, can you tell? <laughs> My name is Jeff Gomez. I am the CEO of Starlight Runner Entertainment. Thousands and thousands of years ago, there was only two ways that you survived in the world. One is that you stood in front of a wild animal and it either killed you or you somehow overcame the beast and brought home the meat. Uh, or a, an authority of some sort told you a story about how to deal with the creature. Um, and that was preferable. To, to be taught through narrative, through story, was something that we started to, to get used to, that, that became a survival mechanism for the human species. And storytelling became hardwired in our minds, beginnings, middles, ends, um, uh, the, um, uh, the process of becoming empathic with the person who's telling the story, with the characters that the story was about, became something that um, uh, was uh, a way for us to uh, process information. So storytelling, beyond anything else, is, is the thing that's going to get you to uh, allow for your audience to empathize with your, your brand, your product, what it is that you're trying to give uh, your audience. A little about me. Um, growing up in the big city um, as a kind of dreamer, I was a little nerdy. And, um, and in the 60s and 70s, nerds didn't have too much choice. Um, uh, we went for uh, the Japanese uh, anime, <laughs> we went for uh, the monster movies, and I especially loved um, these rich um, fantasy worlds that, um, that stretched across multiple books or multiple movies. Uh, I loved the idea of getting lost in these worlds, uh, of imagining myself interacting with those characters. Um, of, of course, the story would always end, and I'd, I'd kind of miss those characters and just have to read the same thing over and over again. Um, growing up, uh, I, I went to a, a friend's house once because we played Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and I said, what is that thing in your living room? And, and he said, well, um, it's, it's my trash 80. I can't play Dungeons and Dragons with Jeff Gomez all the time, so I play on uh, these bulletin boards. And, um, and so, um, uh, essentially, you're joining other people through this, this thing, this DARPA net thing, and, uh, and communicating back and forth, and the story is unfolding between yourself and other people who could be anywhere in the country. And that was awesome to me. That meant that there was a kind of glue now that can attach me to some fantastical world um, uh, that existed between myself and so many other people. Um, uh, I would start to think about how uh, the internet was um, uh, a, a, a device that could allow for us to more readily interact with story. And I began writing about it. Uh, 
um, in uh, magazines, and ultimately uh, a, a way to express myself about these kind of interactive stories was through games and uh, fantasy role-playing games and things like that. Um, the, the thing that made uh, these new fangled games so special, whether you were sitting around a table playing them or playing them through the uh, newborn internet, um, is that it involved um, uh, not just telling a story, but listening and getting the feedback, the reaction of your audience who were actually participants. They weren't just reclining back and hearing your story. They were actively participating in your story. And this fabricated a kind of communal narrative, a, an ongoing uh, storyline that we could all contribute to. Um, when I got older and, and started uh, um, to put my ideas to the test, uh, some of you may remember these, uh, these big Nintendo 64 video games. I developed Turok Dinosaur Hunter uh, for Acclaim Entertainment. But in addition to the story that's in the game, I put the backstory of the characters onto something called the World Wide Web. <laughs> and, um, and because there wasn't enough room in the game, to fit all of the story I wanted to tell. Well, the servers at Acclaim Entertainment crashed. Uh, people wanted to learn uh, about the, the game and about the characters, and they got so excited, we then put more stories in comic books and novels, and, um, and suddenly uh, this game was a multi-platform narrative. I, they, they, they said, Jeff, this is a hit. Can we do it again? <laughs> and, um, and I said, well, there's a, a trading card game called Magic the Gathering. And um, uh, we can take those cards, which have pictures of fantasy characters on the backs of them, and tell stories about those characters and weave those stories into a, a fantasy world. Um, and so we started to create comic books based on these cards, and then we made video games and put more story content on the web, and I began to interact with the fans. I would actually put my email address in the articles about Magic the Gathering. That was crazy because I would get hundreds of thousands of emails. This is in the mid-1990s. But when I would respond to the emails, the way I used to respond to my players in, in these fantasy games, they got so excited that they became extremely loyal um, uh, uh, fans, consumers, and they became advocates for the brand and went out and got more and more uh, people to participate in the story world. Um, uh, to be fans of, of Magic the Gathering. So I thought about this kind of strange cross-media platform storytelling and thought that maybe there's a business model behind uh, the development of these kinds of stories for various brands. Um, uh, I formed a company called Starlight Runner Entertainment and, um, and came up with a kind of practical technique called transmedia storytelling. Um, I used that term uh, from uh, 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 a term that Henry Jenkins, a professor at MIT, had, had raised about how fans loved um, uh, how stories can jump from one media platform to the next. So what Starlight Runner does is maximize the value of our partners' brands um, uh, or their intellectual properties by first determining what the core messaging of the brand is and making sure that that message is extended across all these different media platforms in the form of content that expands the world of the story. 
Um, think about uh, Star Wars. Think about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Transmedia storytelling is now a common practice in big entertainment, um, not just in Hollywood, but all over the world. Um, uh, what we have to do as a company is make sure that the companies that we work for are aligned behind these brands um, uh, and behind these uh, transmedia endeavors. So transmedia storytelling is a tool set it's a technique, it's the process of conveying messages, themes, or storylines to a mass audience through the artful and well-planned use of multiple media platforms. Um, I say artful because storytelling is still a skill, it's still an art, you need a good storyteller on your side. Transmedia storytelling is also distinguished because there is an architecture for dialogue built into your uh, uh, process. You need to listen to your audience. You're doing that through uh, an analysis of data, but also through a practical review of things like social media or media feedback. Um, think of each medium as if it's a musical instrument. Um, so uh, the television is the piano, um, the violin is your mobile phone, um, uh, the, the drums is like a tablet, and, and so forth. I'm not saying that uh, we can't still have beautiful piano concertos, uh, and that you can use the television uh, for your advertising. What I am saying is that you can now combine different aspects of your storytelling into a kind of concerted communication. Um, uh, it, it's kind of an immersive, uh, almost musical communication that surrounds uh, your audience and allows your audience to interact with it. In the old school, you chose a medium to tell your story on, and if it was super successful, then yes, you moved on to other media. Now, you're thinking about your brand, your product, as if it's a world, a story world, and you're extending that world out to each media platform in a way that leverages the strengths of the features of that uh, medium. Okay, so in the old school, you uh, um, had a movie, which might have been based on a novel, um, and uh, you, you might have created a game or an app uh, uh, based on that, and the totality, it didn't quite fit together, it tended to repeat itself, and there were diminishing returns. Nowadays, you're thinking of your communication almost as if it's puzzle pieces. The essence of your brand is in each piece, but each piece is also communicating something slightly different so your audience can piece them together and it all fits and there's an elegance. A world is being built um, based on your core communication. The story world is an ongoing narrative that lives beyond any single movie, novel, video game, or television show. Uh, a story world can encompass them all. So I'm not just talking about Star Wars and Harry Potter. I'm talking about Apple products. I'm talking about um, uh, uh, the um, Prius car. I'm talking about uh, uh, products that show up in different media in different ways. Um, some elements of transmedia storytelling to keep in mind. Um, the content, the story that's being told ought to be told by one or a very few uh, visionaries. The rollout of the story is planned early. You have to think about transmedia from the start. The content is distributed to three or more platforms. It isn't just uh, a website based on your, your product. Um, it is going to be multiple media in concert. 
The content is unique, adheres to platform-specific strengths, and is not repurposed from one uh, medium to the next. You're not repeating and repeating and repeating the same story. Your audience in this day and age tires of hearing the same exact thing all the time. So long as the essence is there, they'll get it. Um, the content is based on a single vision for the story world. You need consistency. Um, and, the, and an effort is made to avoid contradictions between uh, aspects of the story that appear on different platforms. The effort is vertical. Your company has to all agree. All your stakeholders have to cooperate in getting this done. And the rollout must feature that architecture for dialogue, audience participatory elements. The results of successful transmedia storytelling is that your audience, which is so fragmented uh, these days, can run into um, your message on the platform that they prefer. In this day and age, more young people are introduced to Harry Potter through the Lego Harry Potter games than through the books or the movies, statistically speaking. Um, transmedia campaigns uh, give audiences the feeling of inclusion, control, and intimacy. Um, uh, you can have kind of a brand fans who um, uh, curate content and, and draw attention to the uh, intellectual property of the product. Um, audience members become participants, generating social media buzz, uh, blog chatter, and ultimately big media buzz. And um, transmedia storytelling lengthens the engagement um, uh, keeps the story going over long periods of time. And of course, you're tracking all of this with data and um, using the data to improve the story along the way. Transmedia storytelling, um, in order to be successful, requires that you know yourself, that you truly and genuinely understand your own story. Because in this day and age, we are subject to a potentially damaging criticism. It only takes a few people to start saying something negative about your product in order to kind of start uh, uh, something rolling that can rapidly get out of control. Just ask uh, in, in America, Pepsi Cola. United Airlines and Fox News, within two weeks, all were severely damaged um, uh, because they, they did things that didn't actually adhere to the aspirational qualities of their corporate narratives. So your corporate narrative is kind of this epic story of your efforts to realize uh, a vision for the world. Your corporate narrative is rooted in um, a, 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 a modality that must validate and celebrate uh, consumer participation. Your corporate narrative encompasses your vision, uh, your ethos and founding principles of your company, and um, the messages, themes, and universal traits of your company. Your corporate narrative is not just what you say your corporate narrative is. You have to consider how the people of the world perceive you, because that's a part of the story, too. Remember, we're not just storytellers anymore. We are communal storytellers. So you have to be brave enough to acknowledge how you are perceived and make an adjustment to your story to make sure that how you're perceived is the way you want to be perceived. Then you have your product's story, all right, which is slightly different from your company's story, your brand narrative. Um, this is not just the story of how this product can help your uh, uh, consumer, 
but also the conversation that's happening around uh, the product. Um, so this is the intertwining of all stories around your brand, okay? Your brand exists in a river of narratives. Some are yours and some are the consumers. Um, so your brand story, the story you want your brand to be about must be shared and agreed upon by all stakeholders within your company. Everyone has to know what the story is so that if you are confronted in social media uh, or in the press by something negative, you can either say, hey, you have a good point and we're going to make an adjustment to our, our brand, our product, or our narrative, or um, no, we are not that. We are standing by our story because we believe in our story and if you don't, if you disagree with who we are fundamentally, you may want to purchase another product. You may want to um, uh, go elsewhere. We could talk about it, of course. Um, so brand narratives are porous because now the consumer can readily participate in your story. Um, so this transmedia storytelling technique that started in Hollywood with us um, uh, because after Turok and Magic, we did Avatar and Pirates of the Caribbean and Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, but we also started to work on uh, corporations, corporate brands, charities, uh, NGOs, uh, government institutions. Um, and these are just a few of the brands we worked on. Um, how do you get people to trust you and, um, and, and go out and, and create transmedia narratives. Um, one of the ways that we get big companies to agree to do this is that we're able to kind of break down uh, a brand narrative or a corporate narrative into um, its component parts. Um, story is a combination of messages, themes, archetypes, aspirational drivers, um, uh, unique and universal traits. These are the, um, uh, the things that make up good story. It's the soul of your brand. And, uh, and you have to be very honest about who and what you are so that we can um, uh, come up with this brand essence. Um, if there are problems with the product, um, problems with the way that you're communicating the product, we need to determine what those are and fix them either through story or by going back to the drawing board and fixing the actual uh, uh, product. And, and this is tough, but in the long run it's uh, been very, very successful for the clients we've worked with. Once you derive brand essence, you must infuse it into all communications to all stakeholders, including the consumer. Um, so, when we were uh, uh, given Coca-Cola and, um, and uh, this campaign, The Coke Side of Life, we investigated uh, the essence of Coca-Cola and found that there was this aspirational quality of innocence that we infused into the world of Happiness Factory, which was one of the most successful campaigns in the history of, of the brand. Um, so we derived this brand essence and infused it into this animated cartoon universe and made that uh, storyline resonant with um, uh, this kind of uh, uh, post 9-11 malaise um, uh, we wanted something cheerful and happy and unifying uh, to be communicated by Coca-Cola in this kind of dark time. And it truly hit, uh, uh, giving Coke a 7% bump in uh, sales in a climate where their sales had been dropping. Uh, Jonathan Milton Hall uh, was an early uh, a fan of transmedia storytelling. Jonathan was the chief marketing officer of uh, Coca-Cola. He took uh, transmedia storytelling 
and created a, a, an implementation inside Coke called liquid storytelling. And if you go on YouTube and look up Coca-Cola 2020, you can see his explanation of what is essentially transmedia storytelling. Uh, Jonathan went on to become the chief marketing officer of Airbnb, and he took the transmedia concept and applied it to what was effectively uh, a website and an app. And, um, and the results, as I'm sure you could imagine, were spectacular. What he did was he immersed himself and analyzed the essence of Airbnb, the, this, this kind of feeling of universal belonging that Airbnb stood for, and, um, and he was able to take this uh, uh, brand essence and communicate its messages and themes into an array of, of uh, content across all these different media platforms. He used a kind of communal narrative design. He understood that this was needed to be a, a dialogue. And, um, and then it, uh, uh, he, he essentially turned it into a kind of engine, this kind of collective journey engine. Um, and integrated it into multiple media platforms and scaled it, and now it's global. Um, for Singapore and all of Asia, this very thing is something that is doable. Um, and if I leave you with a, a certain message, it would be to be daring, um, uh, to kind of uh, transcend some of the cultural uh, limitations that you're experiencing. Uh, I have been talking with uh, groups like the IMDA and MediaCorp, and there is a new excitement about uh, multi-platform narrative and about reaching people in, in slightly edgier ways, ways that connect to human beings uh, in Singapore and in Asia in much more human, much more real ways. Um, there is a, a new narrative modality called collective journey um, that allows for this kind of omnidirectional um, and um, unified dialogue-based storytelling. Um, I'm going to be writing about it. Um, just uh, uh, connect with me through social media and I'll lead you to it and uh, I'll give you more and more instruction on transmedia storytelling and this new narrative modality, collective journey, uh, uh, very shortly. Here are uh, my last uh, point. Great storytellers, listen. When you feel that you are being listened to, it's magic. Thank you very much.